myself. Hi, I'm Alexander Thomas. I was born in Montana in November 1992. Montana has big, open skies and lots of nature, which I love a lot. I grew up in a small town where everybody knows each other. My mom and dad are both teachers, so our house was always full of books and stories. I'm the middle child in my family, with an older sister and a younger brother. Being in the middle made me learn how to speak up for myself and also how to get along well with others. Ever since I was little, I liked to write and take pictures. Writing and photography help me show others how I see the world. They're my way of sharing what I think is special or interesting. After finishing high school, I decided to study environmental science at the University of Colorado Boulder. I chose it because I've always cared about the planet and wanted to do something to help it. College was tough, but also really exciting. I learned a lot about how we can take better care of the Earth. Now, I work for a group that helps protect the environment. It feels good to do work that's about helping our planet. I try to live in a way that's good for the environment, too, like using less water and electricity, recycling, and teaching my friends and family about why it's important to protect nature. On weekends, you'll probably find me hiking or taking pictures outside. Or I might be at home, reading a good book. My dream is to make the world a better place by helping the environment. I want to learn more and maybe one day help make laws that protect the earth. I hope by telling you about myself, you might get interested in nature and helping the planet, too. Life is an adventure, and I believe we all can do something to make the world better, even if it's something small. A lesson I learned the hard way. Hello there. I'm Jake Carter, and I want to tell you about a tough lesson I learned. It's a story about how not listening can lead to big problems, but it's also about how mistakes can help us grow. When I was in school, there was a big science project we had to do. It was really important because it counted for a lot of our grade. The teacher let us pick our partners, so I teamed up with my best friend, Leo. We were excited because we always had fun together. Our project was about building a model of a volcano. We had two weeks to do it, which seemed like plenty of time. The first few days, Leo wanted to start working on it, but I kept saying we could do it later. I thought we had lots of time, and I wanted to play video games instead. As you can guess, later kept getting pushed further and further back. Before we knew it, we only had two days left before the project was due. Leo was really worried, but I told him it would be fine and that we could finish it in time. We started working on it, but everything that could go wrong did. 
We didn't have the right materials. And we didn't really understand how to make the volcano work. We stayed up all night trying to finish it. But in the end, it looked terrible and didn't work right. The next day, we had to present our project to the class. It was a disaster. The volcano barely erupted, and it was clear we didn't put much effort into it. We got a really bad grade, and it brought down our whole science grade. I felt terrible, especially because Leo had wanted to start earlier, and I didn't listen. He was a good friend and didn't blame me, but I knew it was my fault. That day, I learned that procrastination and not listening to others can lead to failure. It's a lesson I had to learn the hard way, but I'm glad I did. From that moment on, I promised myself I'd manage my time better and listen when others are trying to help. It's made a big difference in my life, and I've never made a mistake like that again. So that's the story of how I learned a valuable lesson the hard way. It's not always easy to admit when we're wrong, but sometimes those hard lessons are the ones that help us grow the most. People who have influenced my life. Hi, I'm Emily Johnson, and I want to share with you some stories about the people who have made a big difference in my life. These people have taught me important lessons, helped me grow, and showed me how to be a better person. My grandmother, Anna. First, there's my grandmother, Anna. She's always been like a second mom to me. When I was little, she would tell me stories about her life, teaching me to be brave and kind. She grew up in a different country and moved here to start a new life. Her stories about starting over taught me that it's okay to face challenges because they make us stronger. My third grade teacher, Mr. Smith. Then, there's Mr. Smith, my third grade teacher. He was the first person outside my family who believed in me. I was really shy and scared to speak in front of the class, but Mr. Smith encouraged me. He taught me that my voice matters and that I should share my thoughts and ideas with others. Because of him, I'm not afraid to speak up anymore. My best friend, Lucy. My best friend, Lucy, has also influenced my life a lot. We met in middle school and she's been there for me ever since. Lucy taught me what true friendship means. She's always honest with me, even when the truth is hard to hear. Because of Lucy, I've learned the importance of honesty and loyalty in friendships. My coach, Coach Davis. Finally, there's Coach Davis, my soccer coach. I started playing soccer without knowing much about it, but Coach Davis saw potential in me. He pushed me to work hard and never give up, even when I wanted to. From him, I learned about dedication, hard work, 
and the importance of being part of a team. He showed me that with effort and teamwork, I can achieve great things. Each of these people has left a mark on my life. My grandmother showed me the power of resilience. Mr. Smith helped me find my voice. Lucy taught me about friendship. And Coach Davis showed me the value of hard work and teamwork. Thanks to them, I've learned lessons that I'll carry with me forever. So, that's a little about the people who have influenced my life. I hope their stories can inspire others just like they have inspired me. My favorite childhood memory. Hey, I'm Alex Martinez, and I want to share with you my favorite childhood memory. It's about a summer day that might seem simple but means a lot to me. When I was about nine years old, my family decided to have a picnic at the lake. This wasn't just any picnic. It was kind of special because my whole family was there. My parents, my two sisters, my brother, and even my grandparents. We packed our car with all sorts of things. A big blanket, a cooler filled with homemade sandwiches and lemonade, and my dad's old guitar. The drive to the lake wasn't long, but with all the singing and joking in the car, it felt like we got there in seconds. The lake was beautiful that day. The water was sparkling under the sun, and there were ducks swimming around. We found a nice spot under a big, shady tree and spread out our blanket. My mom and grandma laid out the food, and it looked like a feast to me. We had my favorite sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, and my grandma's famous chocolate chip cookies. After we ate, my dad took out his guitar and started playing. My dad wasn't a professional musician or anything, but to me, he sounded like one. My family started singing along, even my grandpa, who usually liked to sit quietly and watch. I remember feeling so happy and warm inside seeing everyone I loved having a good time together. The best part of the day was when we went to the edge of the lake to skip stones. My brother and I had a little competition going on to see who could make a stone skip the most times. I wasn't very good at it, but that day, I made a stone skip four times. It felt like a huge achievement, and everyone cheered. That day at the lake is my favorite childhood memory because it was a day full of laughter, singing, and being together with my family. It taught me that happiness doesn't come from big, fancy events, but from simple moments spent with the people you love. Even now, Whenever I feel down or miss my family, I think back to that day at the lake. It reminds me of the love we share and always brings a smile to my face. The Role of Failure in Personal Growth Hello, I'm Mia Thompson, and I want to talk about something that many of us don't like to think about. Failure. Specifically, I want to share how failing has been crucial for my personal growth. When we think of failure, it often feels like a big, dark cloud hanging over us. It's like getting an F on a test, not making the team, 
or messing up a project at work. We're taught to avoid failure, to feel ashamed of it. But what if I told you that failing is actually a good thing? Yes, you read that right. Failing can be good for us. Let me explain by sharing a bit of my story. When I was in high school, I decided to run for student council president. I was so excited and spent weeks preparing my campaign. I made posters, gave speeches, and talked to as many classmates as I could. Election day came, and I felt confident. But when the results were announced, my heart sank. I had lost. I was devastated. For days, I felt embarrassed and didn't want to face anyone at school. But then, something started to change. I began to see that losing the election wasn't just an end, it was also a beginning. It was an opportunity to learn and grow. First, I learned resilience. I realized that life goes on, even after we fail. I went back to school, faced my classmates, and congratulated the winner. It was hard, but it taught me that I could handle disappointment and move forward. Second, failing taught me to reflect. I thought about what I could have done differently in my campaign. This reflection helped me improve. I became better at planning, speaking, and understanding what people care about. Lastly, failing opened new doors for me. Since I wasn't busy with student council duties, I had time to try new things. I joined the debate team, which became a huge passion of mine. If I had won the election, I might never have discovered that. Through failing, I learned that it's not the end of the world. Instead, it's a chance to learn, grow, and become stronger. Now, I see failure as a stepping stone, not a stumbling block. So, to anyone who's afraid of failing, it's okay to fail. It doesn't define you. What matters is what you learn from it and how you bounce back. Embrace failure as a part of growing. Remember, every successful person has failed at something. It's through these failures that we find our way to success. What happiness means to me. Hello. My name is Oliver Green, and I've been thinking a lot about what happiness really means to me. Happiness might look different for everyone, but for me, it's about the simple things in life. Let me share a bit about what makes me truly happy. Firstly, spending time with my family and friends brings me a lot of joy. It doesn't matter what we're doing. We could be having dinner, playing games, or just talking and laughing together. These moments are precious to me because they make me feel loved and connected. 
Another thing that makes me happy is being outdoors. There's something about the fresh air, the green of the trees, and the sound of birds that calms my mind and makes me feel alive. Whether I'm going for a walk, hiking in the mountains, or just sitting in a park, being in nature always lifts my spirits. I also find happiness in helping others. It could be something small, like holding the door for someone or helping a neighbor with their groceries. Seeing someone smile because of something I did fills me with warmth and a sense of purpose. It reminds me that even small acts of kindness can make a big difference in someone's day. Creativity is another source of happiness for me. I love drawing and painting. When I'm creating something, I get lost in the process and time seems to stand still. It's a way for me to express myself and share my view of the world with others. The joy of creating something from nothing is truly special. Finally, Learning new things makes me happy. I'm curious by nature, so discovering something I didn't know before is exciting. It could be a fun fact, a new skill, or insight into a different culture. Learning broadens my horizons and keeps my mind active and engaged. In conclusion, Happiness for me is about the connections I have with people, the beauty of the natural world, the joy of helping others, the freedom of creativity, and the thrill of learning. These things might seem simple, but to me, they are the essence of a happy life. They remind me to appreciate the small moments and to find joy in the journey of life. My aspirations and dreams for the future. Hi there. My name is Sarah Lee, and today I want to share with you my hopes, dreams, and aspirations for the future. Dreaming about the future is like painting a picture in your mind of what you hope life will be like. For me, this picture is filled with goals related to my career, personal growth, and making a difference in the world. Firstly, my biggest aspiration is to become a teacher. Ever since I was a little girl, I've loved the idea of teaching and guiding others. I remember playing school with my friends and always wanting to be the teacher. Now, as I think about my future, I want to turn that childhood game into reality. I dream of standing in front of a classroom, sharing knowledge, and inspiring students to learn and grow. I believe that education is powerful and can change lives, and I want to be a part of that. Secondly, I dream of traveling the world. There's so much beauty and diversity out there, and I want to experience it firsthand. I hope to visit different countries learn about other cultures, and understand how people live in parts of the world that are different from my own. I believe that traveling is not just about seeing new places, but also about growing as a person and becoming more open-minded and understanding. Another important aspiration for me is to give back to my community. I've been lucky to have the support of my family, friends, 
and teachers throughout my life. In the future, I want to pay it forward and help others. This could mean volunteering, working with charity organizations, or even starting my own initiative to tackle issues I'm passionate about, like environmental conservation or education for underprivileged children. On a more personal level, I dream of having a family of my own one day. I imagine creating a warm and loving home where everyone feels supported and valued. I want to be a parent who encourages their children to follow their dreams and be kind, respectful individuals. Lastly, I aspire to be happy and content with my life, no matter what the future holds. I understand that not everything always goes as planned, and that's okay. I hope to find joy in the small things and keep a positive outlook, even when faced with challenges. In conclusion, my aspirations and dreams for the future are a mix of professional goals, personal growth, and making a difference in the world. As I work towards these dreams, I know there will be obstacles, but I'm ready to face them with determination and hope. The future is like a book waiting to be written, and I'm excited to see where my story goes.